For many years, the government agency TB Free has blamed the spread of tuberculosis in cattle herds on possums, pigs and deer. And for many years, farmers have been levied to fund the $100 million wild animal eradication poisoning program. The use of 1080 poison has been the topic of much controversy in New Zealand for many years. They're doing the same thing for the Hunua, Auckland's water supply. They say they have to drop 1080 because there's a rat play. But there is no rat play. And look, there are some genuinely good people in the media, but they, like us, over the years, have come to believe the propaganda and the lies simply because we've grown up with it over, over such a long period of time. But there are people who are genuinely committed to improving the environment, to saving our native species in the way that they need to be saved, to not poisoning them in order to kill them. And when these people discover these new truths that we are now learning about TNA, they'll come over onto our side and we can expect a much better reception from them. Richard Prosser is the New Zealand First spokesman for agriculture and primary industries and has researched the prevalence of TB in wild deer populations. And in the course of, of um, doing some delving into that, uh, did some investigating into the incidence of TB in the possum population relative to the incidence of TB in the cattle population because, um, like a lot of other people, um, I'd, I'd kind of just accepted the anecdotal uh, wisdom that the TB testing regime was incorrect in about 20% of cases. We've, we've always known, everyone's known, that um, uh, the TB tests weren't entirely accurate. Um, but it turns out that that 20% figure is um, really, really understated. Uh, we now know from figures that we've got back from the Ministry uh, in response to questions for written answer uh, that in fact of all cattle that test positive with a skin reactor test and then have the blood reactor test and show positive on those and get sent to the works, um, about three quarters of those positive results turn out to be false. So we're talking about uh, uh, a testing regime that's, uh, to my mind, uh, manifestly inadequate. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to make any sense for a country like New Zealand that depends um, so heavily on primary exports to be using uh, a test for TB, uh, which is quite frankly uh, unacceptably inaccurate. The government agency TB Free has blamed the spread of tuberculosis in cattle herds on possums, pigs and deer. And for many years farmers have been levied to fund the $100 million wild animal eradication poisoning program. What's really annoying about this drop, I'd like to say, is that last two years I've done a, um, a monitoring on pig heads. I've got 60 pig heads out of this area, right through, big scale of bush. Every single one of them was clear, no TB, absolutely nothing. Over what period of time? Over two years, all right. Animal Health Board said to me it will not be 1080 dropped if you come back with no, no TB um, reactors. We've got 15 deer heads out of here as well, they're all clean. They then came back to me and said, no, it's not good enough, you didn't get them from the south end, right? Now the south end, when we first signed the contract, they never even mentioned about doing the south end. They just wanted it from the northern end, and we did that. So they just manipulate however they want to do to, to suit themselves. Pigs and deer are the game animal thing. We've got 25,000 pig hunters in the country, and 10,000 registered deer stalkers in the country, there's no need for them to target these other game animals when they, there's, there's no need for it anymore. In terms of managing TB in, in cattle in New Zealand, we know that it's, it's almost non-existent anyway. Um, and and the, the plan that's being put out at the moment, that we go forward to 2055 or, or whatever the, the, uh, the year is, uh, and spend hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars more, um, is, is, is quite frankly inexplicable. Uh, given that, uh, over the last 10 years, the, the incidence of TB in both cattle and possums has been pretty much flatlined at around about that 0.04% mark. It's almost as if the problem has already been solved and for some reason um, nobody wants to admit that. Yeah, quite concerned about this. You've got all the working dogs, bulls and that here. This sort of stuff just turns up. Been two weeks, I didn't even know this was here until I put these cattle in the paddock. You know. Working dogs gotta shift the cattle and the sheep and all the, everything. How how are we supposed to run our farm when they just keep dropping this crap everywhere? It's hard to farm these farms without dogs. You know, how do I shift these bulls now? You didn't tell me there's bulls there. <laughs> all bulls. <laughs> it's it's all, all good country this, isn't it? It's all nice, nice accessible country, surrounded by farm really. It's a big yep. tongue that comes yeah. out. Mm -hmm. And looking at the flight charts, 
you can see that the buffer zone is just 100 metres there. So this deer has probably eaten the bait in there, come out here for a feed, died out here, That's, and it's quite common, isn't it, Steve? Very common, yeah. We've had yeah. several dead poison deer on farms lately. Yeah, this used to be nice bush back in the old days. There heaps of native birds in there. Now, how many can you hear? Not, not many. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Carcasses and streams are a, a big factor with 1080 drops. Every time there's a drop, there's possum carcasses, even deer and pig carcasses end up in the streams. And then you get the high E. coli. Gosh, that stinks. And people are drawing their water from these creeks. It's surprising how much it stinks, even if it's underwater. Mm. You know? Poisoned animals, including pigs and deer, are left to decompose in the forests and waterways, despite the manufacturer warning label stating, the exposed bodies of all poisoned animals should be collected and destroyed by complete burning or deep burial at a landfill approved for hazardous wastes. A resource consent is sometimes required before an operation can commence. Waikato Regional Council issues resource consents that permit the bait to be dropped directly into water. Uh, we're finding um, perhaps a surprising ally in uh, some people from the farming community uh, who are beginning to question why it is that they have been paying their animal health levies over the last 10 years uh, and, and uh, paying for so much effort to be put, uh, being put into um, uh, bombing large swathes of the countryside with 1080 um, when in fact it seems as though the possum problem as far as 1080 is concerned has already been licked. This is our first possum for the day and I, I just came across this it's a doe, female, and when I came over it was still breathing. It's uh, 20, 20 to 10 in the morning. Possums are not native to New Zealand and are targeted because they browse forests. However, they do provide some benefits. Scientists found that possums are responsible for a large portion of forest seed rain. Possums may now be the only dispersal agents for large seeded native species in many areas. This native moorpork doesn't spread seed but he does eat rats, mice and possum joeys, some poisoned with 1080. This is another possum that's uh, quarter past 12. This one's got rigor mortis, whereas the one this morning, earlier, about around 10 o'clock or quarter to 10, was still warm and just died. He's almost quite cute, this little fella. Look at him, look pretty, isn't he? Come on, little fella, look at you. It's not really ideal, is it, to, to kill them like this? Tens of thousands of possums, deer and birds are poisoned every year. Young animals not poisoned are left to die of cold, hunger, predation or secondary poisoning. The brush-tailed possum is native to Australia and was introduced to New Zealand in 1837 to establish a lucrative fur trade. Possums are now well established across most of the country and although they browse forests, their impact on biodiversity is exaggerated. The $200 million pest industry relies on the retention of the public sphere of biodiversity loss to ensure their budgets are justified. I think I'm going to call you Nick. Nick Smith. How about that? It's got a ring to it. Come on. All of the female possums found the day after the drop had live joeys in their pouches. Vets suggest that there will be poison in the mother's milk, but it may be diluted, and a lethal dose of poison may not be consumed by the time the mother dies. The incidence of TB as it is claimed amongst possums uh, is, is uh, massively overstated. Um, Osprey TB Free Animal Health Board, um, as, as they are in their various manifestations, uh, have kept very accurate records over the years. And we know that going back over the last 10 years, they have autopsied in excess of 124,000 possums. And of those 124,000 possums, 54 animals uh, had TB. So that's at 0.04 of a percent. I'm struggling to understand how this is, is the problem that it's made out to be. The figures uh, as they relate to cattle are, are, are fairly similarly close. Uh, over uh, over uh, the preceding 10 years from Southland, the Waikato and the West Coast, uh, something like 19 million uh, cattle, just over 19 million cattle have been tested for TB. Of those, in the final wash-up, 926 have been shown uh, to actually have TB, which again is a figure of around 0.04 of 1%. And we know that the TB in the human population is about 0.07 of a percent. So uh, people actually have TB at twice the rate the cattle do. Based on world standards, a nation or zone is considered to be TB free if the incidence of infection in animals is 0.1% or less. 
Based on those same world standards, New Zealand has been TB free for many years. I think they've been demonised, they've been made to look like uh, some sort of monstrous creature that's cruising our forests, killing off wildlife, uh, native birds, running out onto farms, infecting cattle. Um, it's, it's, it's a fantasy, they're not like that. They're actually, uh, they're a very clean animal. They spend hours grooming themselves. They, never, they don't carry fleas, they don't carry lice. Um, they have a, a brilliant fur fur that's in demand all over the world, uh, especially now, and uh, and we have departments out there hell-bent on trying to eradicate them. Uh, and in the, uh, in the process, they're actually eradicating a lot of our native wildlife as well, so uh, I think they need to whole rethink on how they uh, deal with the possum. And maybe if we dealt with it on a, a less aggressive manner as far as trying to eradicate them all and, and switch to trying to harvest so many possum a year, I think we'd have a lot more balanced uh, bush life out there. Because in the days when I started doing it, there was a lot of possums out in the bush, but there were also a lot of bird life. These days, not so many possums, but bugger all birds too. So, you know, that must tell you something. The skin is worth $40 uh, because we can get them tanned and I can sell them in the shop or my wife can make garments out of them. So every time I get a good skin, I always uh, value that at $40. And, uh, you know, if we're, I'm working on a, a farmer's property, he always values the meat for his dogs. And uh, we've found a little niche market in uh, possum pies as well. Unfortunately, we can't sell them, but we give them away for a donation. And uh, a few years ago, I was getting more for a possum than what a farmer could get for a sheep. In regard to your possum pies, what's the flavour similar to? Uh, well, flavour-wise, we, we always uh, couldn't work out quite what they tasted like ourselves. So... Um, we did an opinion poll amongst people when they, when they got the possum pie and we asked them to write down what they thought they tasted like because everybody's got a different idea of what things taste like. Lamb was the most common uh, flavour so consequently we, we used to put a little bit of chilli sauce in with the uh, possum because the crazy thing about the meat, it, it has very little flavour at all. It's quite a mild meat, it's less gamey than rabbit. But since people seem to think it tastes like lamb, we now put a little bit of mint sauce in there. The thing, people uh, come in and go, Ugh, you know, possum. And I think, well, look, you eat a pork sandwich and look at the garbage pigs eat. Possums only eat the best, you know. They're, they're eating the, the young shoots and, and leaves. They're not out there, you know, eating the garbage off the highway. So um, it's just a case of educating people. The Chinese think they're great. But then again, the Chinese will eat anything. Why is it that you can't sell possum pie? It's to do with the Food Safety Authority. They have these uh, ideas that uh, we might be going to sell you a uh, possum that's had got 1080 poison in it. You know, if they stop dropping this damn 1080 poison, um, Possum would be more readily available for human consumption. I know of companies that have been uh, that have had export markets for uh, pet food and also uh, possum meat to China. But since the the 1080 has been um, publicised so much now, these companies have just been uh, put on hold because nobody wants to buy it with the risk of uh, secondary poisoning. We, we see the possum uh, issue in New Zealand as very much a case of uh, an opportunity to, uh, to turn adversity into opportunity. Uh, those, the animals are out there and, and uh, actually eradicating them, I don't know how realistic that is, but certainly controlling them down to a level where they're not problematic um, is certainly realistic. Uh, by expanding the current possum trapping and possum fur industry, we could grow GDP by uh, something like $58.5 million a year, along with an additional 760 jobs. 
Um, now again, this is simply relating to possum fur and possum fur garments, uh, and it doesn't include the potential that's to be had from um, possum merino, because uh, merino statistics on merino possum aren't collected the same way. So that's all in addition uh, to those numbers. I guess just 40 years in the business of possums, it uh, gives us our, um, our qualifications and uh, taking it from the trapper all the way through to the, the um, end customer. It's such a fabulous fibre, the world just can't get enough of it really. Uh, we can export every um, kilo of fibre that we can get. You know, in the big years of, in the late 80s, we harvested 3 million skins and, um, and in those days the guys were going right up the tops and hiring helicopters and jet boats and living out there and bringing in really good furs for the trade. But today, um, th those are the days when we did it for fashion. Today we're doing it for the commodity trade, which is the, the knitwear, uh, and so there'll always be a fairly good stable market for the possum. And because its qualities are now renowned, um, you know, there's so many more uses. You know, if, the, if other parts of the world decided that other uses, like the textile industry, apart from the knitting, you know, we just wouldn't be able to get anywhere near what, what the demand would be. Possum fibre, as a, as a commodity, can reach up to $130 a kilo. Why do you go catching possums? So I can get some money. And how much fur have you got there, do you think? Mm, about a kilogram in here. And that's just a raw product going out of the country. Um, whereas sheep's wool, you know, some of it as low as $5 a kilo. Good merino, 20 You do see merino being very highly priced, but as an average, I think it's around that mid-20 mark. Um, today, cashmere, I believe, is around about 56 US dollars a kilo, which, you know, when you compare the possum is just right up there with the top value fibres of the world. So it's, it's a shame not to harvest it, it's a shame not to create the work for the country and, and it's a shame that it hasn't got the name that is up there with the elite things of the world, you know, New Zealand possum rather than being like, oh, New Zealand possum, right down there, it should be like New Zealand possum as, as the quality product that it is. We all need to be working together and New Zealand First is committed to working with communities, uh, with groups, with interest groups right around the country uh, to achieve sustainable outcomes, to solve the problems that uh, 1080 is uh, purportedly used to address um, in ways which actually are environmentally sustainable and which are humane and which are species specific. Uh, we, we can all do this if we work together as a nation, as a community, um, we, can, we can solve these problems, we can get rid of this poison. Uh, and we can still have the outcomes that we're seeking.